Hello and welcome to me, Felix, and this Briefly Everything. If you follow our videos chronologically, you'll know how we talked about our first couple of civilizations in our last episode. Go back in our timeline if you feel like that's something you did not want to miss. So in the last episode, we learned of all the important civilizations in the world, and today we'll pick up in 3000 BCE, when it seems people around this time in modern-day Kazakhstan stopped eating the horse because they thought that... <coughs> uh, hey guys, uh, a better idea, how about we ride them instead? And riding them, they did. And this obviously helped us travel much further, hunt and fight more efficiently as well. Although we can't be certain, but the horse is also probably appreciated no longer being just looked upon as meat anymore. In Mesopotamia, the Sumerians at the same time actually came up with the first form of writing through cuneiform. It looked something like this, and it was used to keep track of trade, which involved some sort of basic math skills as well. So this was actually an incredible feat. They both managed to invent language and math at the same time, these incredible Sumerians. And by the way, the invention of writing also marks the transition from prehistory to history. So I'm glad to announce that briefly everything is, after much endeavor, <coughs> finally a history. History course. Now, over in Egypt around the same time, they started using hieroglyphs, which is our second language in history and a very complex one at that, consisting of more than a thousand symbols. Another great invention of this time was uh, money. The earliest known currency, consisting of gold bars, was used at this time in Egypt and Mesopotamia. You actually had to weigh your gold to establish its value. Heavy job being rich, I guess, only the real Jim Boffs could actually make it. Year 3000 BCE is also commonly known as the start of the Bronze Age, which means people started using bronze for tools. This is the first time in history we started to work with metal. This happened in many places at around the same time, but the Chinese were particularly skilled at forging bronze tools and even weapons. And ladies, you should also be thankful to the Chinese because they invented nail polish around this time. It was made from beeswax, egg whites and some other delicious things. Moving 300 years down our timeline, this is the first time we'll mention Greece in ancient history, much, much, much before Athens makes its entry later on. Although Greece is better known, along with Athens 2,000 years from now, during this time we have the Minoans, who were the first Bronze Age society to emerge in Europe. The Minoans were very isolated from the rest of the world, living on the island of Crete. We'll get back to these guys in about 800 years when something terrible happens. <laughs> But for now, your only homework is to remember that these guys existed, and they did so in Europe as well. The Chinese now, who have still to make their entry in history, invent silk around this point. The actual invention is more of a myth, but it's the best origin story we have. For almost 3,000 years, they were the only ones who knew how to make silk, and they kept that recipe like a national treasure, a cunning move which enabled them to hold a monopoly on one of the most sought-after products of the time. We're starting to get pretty specific dates here, and we have another one here, 2630 BCE. In Egypt, we have our first pyramid, the Pyramid of Djoser. Sorry for butchering that pronunciation. Making it almost 5,000 years old today. In addition to the pyramids simply being ginormous, the other equally impressive thing about them is that they were almost perfect in their symmetry. The shape of a pyramid is supposed to symbolize the rays of the sun reaching down to Earth. And this one pyramid here was designed and constructed by a man called Imhotep, who subsequently is known as history's first architect. The pyramids in Egypt are also the only ones out of the seven wonders of the ancient world to still be standing to this very day. Building these pyramids took centuries and was done by 10 to 100,000 people and it was used as a form of taxation. By the way, some of you, including myself, probably grew up watching the film The Prince of Egypt and thinking that the enslaved Jews built the pyramids, but that's actually an offensive lie. They actually appeared much, much, much later down the timeline. In fact, they appeared a thousand years after the last great pyramid was built. More about the Jews in later videos. Pyramids were built as tombs for the kings, who claimed they were pharaohs or reincarnations of God. When early pharaohs died, they were sealed into their tombs alongside their servants, pets and concubines who were casually buried alive. The tombs contain things that a god would need in the next life. Some even included a toilet. Very handy if you're planning to spend eternity locked inside a pyramid. In order to preserve the bodies in perpetuity, the Egyptian ruling class developed a process of mummifying an eviscerated corpse. So as if being buried alive isn't scary enough for you, now you have to lie right next to a mummy as well. Along these lines, I'd like to mention a funny cat fact here as well. They were actually sacred animals in Egyptian temples, so you can see them roaming about and depicted in many, many paintings as well. And on that note, I'd like to wrap it a little bit for today. In today's episode, we've covered 400 years of history and a lot seemed to have happened during this time. We invented a lot of things, such as writing, maths, 
uh, even history itself. And we saw the start of the Bronze Age and we built our first pyramid. Quite a productive video, if I may say so. Thank you very much for watching and um, I hope you have a good one until I see you again. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.